Hello everybody, it's Adam here, coming back to you from Houdini Apprentice with a new tutorial on how to use audio to move an object along a path. So let's go ahead and get started here. I'm just going to um, move my mouse over here, press Tab Geo, drop down a geometry node. We'll double click to go inside, throw the file away, press Tab Line, and we'll go ahead and set this to 100 points. Uh, we'll move back up and we'll scale it, say 10 in the Y. And that's going to be the path that we're going to push our objects along with sound. And we'll go ahead and we'll just do a box and a sphere. Move one over here. And we'll move one over here. And maybe we'll, uh, let's see, uh, we'll scale this down just a little bit like that drop out into shop. I have a couple materials preset here. We'll just do red and blue. And we'll go ahead and pop back to object and uh, spacebar L, H. Let's get going. We'll rename this to path. Um, and we'll make the sphere object follow the path. Choose that. And we'll make the box object follow the path. Okay, so we're going to tab and type chop and drop into the chop network here. Tab uh, file, uh, copy, paste, paste. We're going to have an extra file just for our mix so we can hear the difference here. Um, let's go ahead and populate these. The I have some pre prepared files here that are just soloed, so I've got a, a wave that represents just the kick, and I've got a, where do we browse, up here, a wave that represents just the snare, and then I have a wave that represents the entire mix. So we'll go ahead and rename this. This is kick, this is snare, and let's, this is the mix. Uh, mic mix. Okay, so let's go ahead and hit our speaker button. Choose scrub, leave it on chop, and then browse out into that chop and choose mix, accept. Now I think I'm going to pop up, let's close this audio out, pop up a level and rename this to music. Go back in. And we'll listen to our wave. Wonderful. So if you hear the robot sound, it's because uh, you don't have real time activated. So we'll activate real time and this time we'll play. Okay, got a slow little groove going and we want to use, this will be our kick and this will be our snare. So we want to move the kick along the path. Now if we examine with middle mouse, middle click, we can see we have Chan 0 here, Chan 0 1 here, Chan 0 1 here. So let's drop down a merge uh, to mix all these together and then we'll drop down a null as well just to give us our amplitude out. And we are only dealing with amplitude in this example here. Um, we're not dealing with any frequency manipulation at all. So if we merge these things all together, these channels are going to conflict. So we have to drop down a rename. I'm going to go ahead and drop that one down, copy paste, and we'll go ahead and connect this in and this in. And we want to rename Chan Zero to just kick. And over here we want to name it to snare. And I'm going to go ahead and make a little room here because this network's going to get a little bit bigger. These guys can come down here, put this over here, this over here, and we'll go ahead and just merge these guys in and just see what we get. Whoops, we just want the bottom one. And if we inspect with middle click, we can see indeed we have a kick and a snare channel coming out. So let's put the 
a visualization on the final one, and we'll move to back up to the object level and connect these guys in. So I'm going to go ahead and select the box here, and uh, we need to, uh, where's our path information? There it is. Where the position is, we want to just type chop, dot, dot, slash, and then wait for this list to populate. Choose music. That's why I renamed it, so it would stand out to me. Slash, and then amplitude out, so it would stand out. And then when I hit slash again, a new list does appear, but this list does not have our channel names in it. So we have to remember what we typed, which was kick, quote, close parenthesis. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that hit enter and we'll go to the sphere we'll paste that in and we'll change this to snare and now if we hit play you can see we get some shaky mess basically and uh, a lot of times people just continue working with this thinking this is good enough but I think we can do a little better so let's go back into our chop here and see what we can do with uh, filtering this stuff. So we'll go ahead and split our view, top, bottom, and I'm going to hit the plus here and choose motion view. And we will go ahead and we will select our speaker so that we're listening to what we're looking at. That really does help. So we'll select the kick, accept, and we'll go ahead and mute the snare. So all we're looking at here is the kick, and let's hear it. Have a listen. So we see what's going on. We need to get rid of this snare. Even though this is a soloed track, like I recorded this with a mic in the kick drum, there's still some snare leak through. So let's go ahead and fix this up, and it's pretty easy to do. We'll just pick a limit. We'll visualize the limit and we'll turn it on and set it to clamp. And we get these min-max handles and all we really need to do is just drag this up until we don't see a snare anymore. And I'm going to say that, and I can still see a little bit of a snare here, so I'm going to go ahead and go up to there. And we'll bring our max down to the top of that. Now if we click on the bottom here, we can see that says 0 0.487. Look over in this area. 486. If I click up here, 0 0.878. And you can see that indeed we have moved our cube by mu moving these numbers. But it's still not giving us what we want here. And uh, we're going to follow this up with an envelope. And what an envelope does is it kind of smooths things out. We'll visualize the envelope and we'll set the width all the way to 10. You can see now we've got this uh, smoothed out uh, effect going on here. The, but this still isn't going to get us what I want. This, these are just pulses that are happening. What we really want to do is we want a stepped effect and we can achieve that by counting the beats and we'll use a count node to do that. So we're going to drop down a count node and the count node requires, I'll middle click here, an increment value. So we're going to use a constant. I'm going to type tab constant. Select that node and plug it into 3. And now let's configure these nodes so that they function for us. The constant has to be, and you can do multiple channels with the constant, um, and we know we've renamed ours, so let's go ahead and type kick here and set this to greater than 0. So we'll just say 0 0.02 what, maybe. And then we'll visualize the count node. And we have nothing. I'm going to space bar home. We indeed have nothing. Even if I go out 0 to 1. And for each wave, this is a little different. So you have to play with the trigger threshold until you find, oh, there we are, until some data appears. And, and then you need to kind of dial it in and find the sweet spot where basically it looks pretty good, like it's covering the range. We have our stepped effect, but it's still 
it's starting at zero but it's not ending at one so we've got to get this to stretch all the way up to there in order for this cube to cover the entire length so let's go ahead and adjust our uh, increment value and when I up my increment value you can see uh, I'm gonna guess 0, 062 that looks pretty good we'll home that we're almost at one that should be good enough so let's rewind and play and we'll undo the solo on our snare Bump. Bump. let's see Bump. Okay, so that's the effect I wanted. That's working. Um, let's go ahead and pull this, do the same trick with the limit and the envelope over here on the snare. We'll drop down a limit. Uh, we'll, we will right click, we'll type uh, ENV, get an envelope, and uh, we'll set the envelope um, width all the way to 10. Then we'll go in and visualize the snare here. We'll turn off the kick. Uh, spacebar home and you can see indeed and if we listen to this we'll go ahead and switch over to the snare now that we're working on it close this dialog out it's it's moving a lot better now but you can see it's moving when the kicks hitting and we don't want that and if we look at this pattern here, we can see that while the snare is strong and loud, these kicks are pretty loud too. So we're going to have to do the same trick with our limit here. We're going to turn it on first, uh, clamp, and we're just going to have to cut out all of that kick stuff all the way up to there. And we'll bring this all the way down so they're all, the spikes are basically the same size. And now let's see what happens when we play. We have isolated only the snare. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, jump back up to the obj level. So let's go ahead and uh, put our final function in for the sphere object here. Now we have our uh, values working, but we didn't take note of that. Let's, let's go over here and click on this. 0 0.61, watch this area around 0.6 and the top side is 0.74 so let's go ahead and write a fit function for that we'll type fit open parenthesis I'm gonna hit the end key to jump to the end of the line comma now our old min is 0.6 our old max is 0.75 and then the new is just 0 comma 1 close parenthesis and now if we play Let's go ahead and turn this on and we will go ahead and pick our mix again except um, maybe drag this down get in here rewind so this is two different ways to use audio to control the way objects move in your scene and I'm sure there's a hundred or a thousand more ways to do it. But I wanted to offer this up because I've been trying to uh, get this stepped counting mechanism working. And I wanted to present it to everyone out there. And with that, I'm out.